Some nerds. This might seem like a slightly different video because, well, it is a different video. You see, I'm actually gonna be reviewing a monitor in this video, specifically this one right here, the BenQ RD280. But before I get into it, I just wanna share with you a quick story as to why I wanna review this monitor in the first place. You see, back in the day, which was a Wednesday, by the way, Apple released the absolute best monitor for programming. It was called the Apple Cinema Display. Specifically, I'm talking about the 30 inch one. I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was beautiful. It was released in 2004 sandwiched between the two best albums ever made, which of course was Take This to Your Grave by Fall Out Boy in 2003, and then From Under the Cork Tree by Fall Out Boy in 2005. It was a pinnacle moment for emo pop punk, but I digress. This monitor by Apple had a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, a flat matte screen, and a whopping, for the time, 2560 by 1600 resolution. I considered this the perfect monitor for programming, and I happily used one as long as I possibly could, well past the discontinuity date of 2010 by the way and ever since that monitor was discontinued and I stopped using it I've always been looking for the replacement I've never really felt super comfortable with any of the other monitors that have been released since then really the new Apple monitors were always so glossy and they were all the 16 by 9 screen and a glossy screen just doesn't work you know I mean I like to sit near a window and a glossy screen with a dark background like my cappuccino theme by the way and the window with its light peering in it just wasn't a good combination I hated glossy screens so in the meantime, I've settled for a nice 16 by 9 monitor that was matte. It was actually another BenQ monitor, by the way, and I've been kind of happy. But recently, BenQ reached out to me and asked me to review a new monitor that was 28 inches. It was a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, and it had a 4K plus resolution. And best of all, it was a matte screen. It's aimed at programmers. And when they asked me to review it, I said, hell yeah, brother, send it right along. So here we are. I'm reviewing the BenQ RD280 stick around it's gonna be fun let's get into it So to start this off, let's just get the boring stuff out of the way. This monitor comes with a lot of the things you would expect a monitor in this price point, which is about $600 to come with. It comes with one HDMI 2.0 port. It comes with a display port port. It also comes with a USB-C port with a 90 watt charging capabilities, which means that you can just plug it right into your laptop and it'll charge the laptop while allowing you to extend your display. And it also has KVM capabilities. You have a USB type B upstream port that you can plug all your peripherals into and then using the the extra USB-C port, you can connect that to another computer so that when you switch between your computers, depending on your display's output, it'll bring along the USB output with it. So you can keep the USB peripherals with you. It's something you would expect in this price point, which again is around $600, but it's nice to see that it's included in this monitor. You also have the ability to daisy chain this display with another BenQ display using the USB-C ports. They have a proprietary technology called MST, and you can daisy chain displays together so that only one display output from your laptop can power two monitors. It's a nice touch. And again, it's good to see this sort of thing in this price point. And any other measurements that you're interested in, like the max nits, the brightness, how many pixels per square inch, whatever that is, you can check it out on BenQ's website. I'll link it down below. I'm not that interested in talking about that though. I wanna talk about how this monitor works in a day-to-day -day situation. You see, I've actually replaced my previous monitor, which was a BenQ, funnily enough, with this monitor. So I've been using it every single day for about the past three weeks now. That's right, you could say that we're in an exclusive relationship. I updated my Facebook profile. So let's go over what I think makes this monitor really great. First off, the appearance. This monitor just looks solid as a rock. It looks very high quality from the built-in moon halo light, the flat black matte display, and even the touch controls on the bottom. This monitor just has great packaging and looks really nice. Speaking of the moon halo light, it's actually a really nice touch for this monitor. It's easily controllable from the front controls at the bottom and you can select how bright you want it to be. It's also well positioned and gives off just a great warm light. And it also looks really great and like just classy from behind. If you're walking up to this monitor from behind and that moon halo light is on, it looks really nice. And speaking of behind the monitor, if you shell out the extra $30 or so, you get a special ergo arm that comes shipped with this monitor and it is amazing. I honestly don't think I've ever wanted to use the packaged stand that comes with a monitor ever. They're usually 
usually crap, but with the RD280 out of the box, if you shell out the extra $30, the monitor arm is wonderful. It's easily articulatable, if that's a word. It's easy to lift it up and down, and it's also awesome when it comes to flipping the monitor on its side. If you're one of those freaks who uses your monitor on the side, I really love the monitor arm. It's very high quality, very sturdy, and I will use it very happily for the life of this monitor. So now let's talk about the actual display itself. The resolution on this monitor is a 3840 by 2560 display, which means it's a little bit better than just 4K. And I'll tell you, it really shows. The resolution is great, the text is extremely crisp, and the IPS panel is phenomenal. Also, it's a matte screen, which I think is perfect for programming. There's no gloss to this thing, and it just works perfectly when you're trying to read code. And reading code just feels very effortless to do. The text really jumps out on the screen. It's a really nice thing. And speaking of reading code, BenQ has some built-in features they tout for, you know, programmers. They have a couple built-in modes, one for a dark mode and another for light mode. The dark mode really makes the text on the screen pop out in a noticeable way. And I'll tell you, it makes my capuchin theme look even better than I thought it could, which was impossible in my brain. And if you choose the light mode, that I guess it does something similar, but in a lighter way. I haven't used the light mode as much, but I really like the dark mode. BenQ also has a built-in sensor that can adjust the brightness based on the light in your room. They call it night hours protection. And I just set this to the default and I kept it there. It's nice when the room is a little bit brighter, like it maybe it is right now. And then when it goes a little bit darker, the brightness of the screen turns down automatically and you see a little pop-up notification saying night hours protections turned on. My typical use case for this monitor is to leave it in my profile, which has a certain level of brightness that I'm comfortable with. I leave the night hours protection on. I have the moon halo light also on and I adjust the blue light so that there's less blue light coming out of the monitor and it just feels a little bit warmer to look at. That's how I like to use it. Now, this monitor is wonderful. I love the three by two aspect ratio. I really do feel like I can see just so much more code on the screen. It makes me feel way more productive, but there are some cons to this monitor, and there's one in particular that I think you need to be aware of if you're looking into it, and that is this is a 60 hertz monitor. And I have to say, that's a drawback that I wouldn't have thought of on my own. I have never owned a monitor that is higher refresh rate than 60 hertz before. So for me, this isn't really a bad thing. Thing. But for a lot of you out there on Twitter, you said that you prefer 144 hertz or even better because it makes scrolling that text on the screen buttery smooth. I'm sure you're right, but for me, it's not really a concern. I like 60 hertz. This works perfect for me, but it is something I wanted to make you aware of. Now, I think this monitor personally is very much worth the $600 price point, but if you're on a bit of a budget or if you think maybe 28 inches is a little bit too much for you, BenQ did also release another programmer focused monitor. It's the BenQ RD240. That is a 24 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio monitor. It's not quite 4K, but the screen is beautiful. The text also pops off the screen, also very crisp. It's also a great monitor. And it has a lot of the same features as the BenQ RD280, except it doesn't have the KVM capabilities, but it's still an excellent monitor and it's definitely a little bit cheaper. So if you're into that sort of thing, you should check that out. Now, in conclusion, I think the RD280 is an excellent programming monitor. I really do feel like I'm more productive on it. In fact, I've replaced my previous monitor with this monitor full time. This is the monitor I use. So I personally think it's worth it. If I had the budget and I was looking for a monitor, this is what I would look for. It's great for programmers. It's great for day-to-day -day use. And personally, I won't look back. And if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper, the 24 inch that BenQ released recently as well, also a great choice. But you know what else would be a great choice is that if you're into Linux, Vim, programming, or whatever else, make sure to subscribe. And hey, thanks nerds.